All right, well, let's get started. And I'm assuming you're all here to learn a little bit about using the new API and talking about supplementing your traditional business intelligence or visual analytics dashboards with anomaly detection. So some of you may know who I am, some of you may not. So as we go through this session, I will let you know who I am. I'm JC, I'm John Coulthard. I work over here at MindBridge and I've spent the last five and a half years here really working on all different fronts of you know, being the face of, of many customer and pre-customer conversations, really discussing what MindBridge can do for you. So I'm really excited to spend half an hour with you here talking through all the different things that happen to be related to taking data out of MindBridge and using it elsewhere or creating new automation. So I've got a short little agenda today. We're going to talk about today's business intelligence and visual analytics tools. We're obviously going to talk about the value you're getting out of risk analytics and, and why that might be appropriate for, for BI. Talking about using a best of breed approach and how you can leverage our API. And then I want to give you a couple of intro demo points of what we have. And obviously, we'll leave time for question, answer, and wrap up. So just before I get started, I've got a couple of questions, that uh, polling questions. I'll ask the first one right now, just so I can get a baseline of the audience. Nick, would you mind bringing that up for us? We'll just give you that a minute just so that I can see some of the results. All right, we'll close that down in just a second here, if you don't mind, Nick. Awesome, so let's get at it. So today's business intelligence and visual analytics tools, what is it and what are they? Well, at the end of the day, I think everyone's used the topmost left in my little image chart here, Excel. Really, when we start to think about analytics tools, business intelligence tools, and if you go back 30 or 40 years, uh, although I'm not that old in technology, you get to things like decision support systems and early stages of BI tools. Now, a lot of folks talk about it in terms of visual analytics, but what's interesting is the market's been around for a really long time. Ever since we wanted to see data, we needed to create charts and graphs. And so in the early 80s, mid 80s, people used a lot of desktop publishing tools to just get the visualizations look just so. With the advent of Microsoft and the Office Suite, you all of a sudden had Word and Excel and PowerPoint to display your data. Then as we moved into the late 90s and into the 2000s, you ended up with a lot of really strong organizations, business objects, um, uh, folks like Panorama, which Microsoft bought, or looking at um, the various elements of Cognos with their SQL impromptu and other things. And now that whole landscape has changed. So in the 2000s, early 2000s or mid 2000s, there's a huge consolidation, which left, uh, left us with the big juggernauts, the IBMs, Oracles, SAPs of the world, and obviously Microsoft um, sitting alongside it. And then now we're into this new position where even the most recent or the advancements or the new elements of, of visual analytics tools are being acquired by large organizations like Tableau recently being acquired by Salesforce or Looker uh, being acquired by Google. And I think what that really tells you is that visual analytics and, and visual tools are really still the picture paints a thousand words, right? Or is worth a thousand words. And so right now, when you think about where you need to go, it really depends on how your users consume data. And we assume that they're going to consume it in the business intelligence landscape. There's a lot of different ways that people use data, right? Whether it be generic use cases like putting out your OKRs, working through your KPIs, um, you know, making sure that you have got divisional or departmental reporting and sort of, sort of seeing your trends and charts over time or, you know, images like maps to see heat maps and, and see where things are at. But in finance accounting and audit, we sort of see it a little bit different, right? We see it very much focused on what's that financial health of that business? You know, are there profitability and spend concerns? How are we doing period over period? And again, when it comes to products or customers, when it comes to, you know, where we're spending or where we're investing, right? You might want to look at that on some geographical maps. But at the end of the day, we still tend to be fairly simplistic in the data that we enrich these dashboards with. And I think that's partially a point of where do you get all of this data? If you're an accountant, if you're in a professional services firm, so one of our many clients uh, that might be on the line with us here, you're probably looking at lots of different ways to pull their data together, but internally also looking and reflecting at how is our business operating? And those are two very distinct and different data sets. And so with MindBridge, you have the ability to actually pull both of those different types of data sets independently and pull them into 
uh, into your dashboard. So you could be seeing where you are on all your client engagements, the status of them and, and elements about those engagements. And from a from a uh, looking at your client data, you could actually blend together the data they've sent you and the financial risk scores. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. Um, but generally, these are the types of use cases that we see in, in, in business intelligence. Now, as with most things technologically, there's always a big challenge in terms of making effective business intelligence or making things effective. And, and we used to talk about it in terms of the four Vs, but now you can actually look at it across the 10 Vs. There's actually quite a lot of challenge and, and, and orientation issues when it comes to making business intelligence successful. Now we've got the first four Vs, right? The, the ones that are sort of paramount to everything, volume. Well, you know, we've got a lot of data going through our systems today. We've got a velocity challenge, right? How often do we report things? Do we need it hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, annually, right? We've got variety. We have data coming in from all different parts of our business these days, and we might want to actually look at all this data together in one simple, easy to view way, which is really, really hard. And then you've got the veracity. You've actually got a challenge of trying to make all this data sort of line up and make sense. Not only do you have different sources, you have different ways to, that you might want to see that data. And then you get into the other ones, and the other ones are a little bit more, more esoteric or, or take a little bit more time to think about. But some of the ones I'd point out where there are challenges for BI are things like the, the vocabulary and the vagueness of that data. And this is where we sometimes see challenges for, for organizations to really take that data and harness that lake if you've built a data lake or if you've built a warehouse and really bring it up and make it easily available to all your users. And that's because we have to create a, a bit of a data dictionary. We have to have the ability to see exactly what's going on to my, uh, to my data. We have to have a common language. And then there's also the vagueness, like did this include all the data? What else is in this data? Who queried this data? Where did it come from? And so you have all of these challenges of trying to bring these things together. So in my opinion, right, data is one of those big challenges for making BI effective. You also have challenges just with things like bias and, and other elements, which I think we can talk about more when we get into achieving more value with your risk analytics. So for those of you that are existing customers, thank you. Obviously, we'd love having you on board. For those of you that might be prospective customers, a lot of this comes down to what else can you do with this data? This data is yours. It's yours to be able to use. Now, from a MindBridge perspective, we sort of have a couple of principles that I want to share. And one of the first principles is traditional business intelligence or traditional methods of sharing insights is very much a top-down flow. And what I mean by that, or the way that I describe that is, when we start looking at financial statements, we're typically looking at trial balance sort of period over period analysis. Some folks will call that flux analysis, but essentially you're summarizing a whole bunch of data and you're bringing it sort of in a period over period view, or you might be doing variance to maybe a different type of data, like a forecast versus actual. And at the end of the day, it's at this aggregated level that really makes it hard to look at what's happening underneath the covers. There's also an inherent challenge in this data because you don't really know where you need to mine for the data. So we sometimes talk about the known knowns, the known unknowns, and the unknown unknowns with MindBridge. And what we try to do is sort of help silf, sift and filter through and make the known knowns easy to see. With traditional business intelligence tools, it's a little harder to see where those needles are, right? Or where those things we think are, because we have to rely on someone pulling all of that data in and then creating a visual for me, because not all of us want to be, you know, Power BI or Tableau or ClickTech De uh, developers, right? So it's really challenging when we're using aggregated data with a data model that is, is predominantly imbued by a bunch of bias and being able to navigate that and make it really sensible. So it's sort of this top-down view. Now, some of these tools, they're great, right? Especially if they're part of the big uh, mid-2000s consolidation I talked about. So you have organizations like Oracle and SAP that have taken their business intelligence layers and all of their ERP layers, and they've sort of created this drill down methodology that allows me to get down into the lower levels of data. So in those cases, obviously, there's lots more that you can get to down in the foundations. What MindBridge is really trying to do is it's trying to give you that ability to roll everything back up in a different way. We wanna start at the entries, we wanna start at the transactions, and we wanna risk score them and add up the, the, the data as we go. So it's really this idea of difference of, you know, sort of top-down summarized data versus detailed data coming all the way up to the top. And when you think about why people aren't using this data or why the industry isn't, isn't catching up in, in just generic terms, so your peers that aren't part of this, this edge environment 
uh, and, and user conference or those that, that are going to listen to this in replay, right? It's that creating and maintaining all this data can be really, really challenging, especially when you want to start bringing in artificial intelligence, which is obviously bread and butter to the things that MindBridge does. Now, when we think about the value in, in overall risk analytics, I think it really comes down to, um, you know, I, I love the com conversations and the concepts, you know, Jonathan Kraftchuk over at Cherry Beckhart once said, you know, MindBridge doesn't just, you know, find the, you know, find the needles in the haystack or make it easy. He, he said, just burn the haystacks because that's what MindBridge is doing. I'd actually like to like him to further that a little bit. And with all the work that we're doing, it's about just showing you where the needles are, right? Forget that you've got a field full of haystacks. It's just here are the things that you need to focus on. And with some of the new capabilities and what's on screen now is the risk segmentation dashboard, which was launched out in our summer 2022 release, you get the ability to start seeing more of your data, right? In more different ways that make sense for you. So again, some of that value comes from, we've taken all the lowest level of accounts and we've brought all this data up. And as we aggregate it up and as we summarize it, we have the ability to do lots of different segmentation in that data to make it easily and quickly available to your users. Now that can confirm the known knowns quickly. Hey, we already know that we've got this one area that's always gonna be high risk tangible assets. Okay, great. I see that we've got those 14 entries and I see that it's, it's, it's you know, flagged as sort of an elevated risk for most of those transactions. Great. I know exactly what I need to do with that. But maybe there's an unknown risk emerging with the journal entries, although most people would say we're going to test those manual entries anyways. But you get the point, right? This risk segmentation gives you the ability to sort of look at data in lots of different ways. And that's really the end of the day, what a business intelligence or a dashboard or visual analytics tool is doing. So in MindBridge, you get all this great data. Now we need to ask the question of where can you take that value and how can you have it? And I would say that the value starts becoming more and more effective is as you start pushing this data into where users already are. If you're a professional services accounting firm, obviously you're doing your audit. You're going to be in MindBridge a lot of the time. But again, you might be building client facing reports where you want to take some summarization of data. Great. You can pull that out into a Power BI instance, for example, and actually use various template, templated approaches in things like Power BI or a visual analytics tool and actually create more client facing reports. For those of you that sit in the enterprise, the internal audit team is typically inside of MindBridge, but you've got all of these, you know, level one and level two, you know, levels of, of defense for, for, for um, risk management. And you might want to put the data where they work and they may work in visual analytics tools for a variety of reasons. So the value is we look at embedding and creating a granular set of understanding of that data across some of these areas. And what we're trying to do is help you take this data and put it wherever else you might want to put that data. So it immediately gets you from sort of just the, the vanilla summary period over period data now into this really rich score data sitting alongside what you're doing. So those are some of the reasons where we see or some of the ways where we see um, risk analytics sort of blending into this. Now, why did we release the API and, and why is this an important area and step? not just for traditional business intelligence and traditional analytics, but actually I would say it's just the right approach for a lot of different reasons, because regardless of whether you look at um, Gartner studies, Forrester studies, other um, industry level studies, the reality is a best of breed approach for everything you do is typically better. So we built an API, we released it again in the summer 2022 release. And if you haven't seen our, our webinar, which goes more in depth than I can in the short 30 minutes that I have with you here at Edge, please go onto our website, pull down the API uh, webinar and have a review of it. But the reason we do that is because we know that organizations who are going to be the winners in the longer term are gonna be where they've got an ecosystem of, of information flowing to the right people at the right times with the right level of insights. And this is just an interesting resource that I, I was reading not too long ago from Slack, where they talked about not just on our experience to you, so from a vendor to consumers, but also when you look at it across the vendors that exist, right? We built um, data acquisition for some of the leading cloud ERPs, and we're gonna continue that mission through their APIs. Because what you see here is, the, the last statement of this one, right? The new direction is all about creating value with other players in the ecosystem. And the way that we think about that is the ecosystem is not just us with you, right? Presenting our risk analytics data in other things you're working on, but it's also making it easier to access and acquire data for you 
through some of these things. And longer term, who knows, right? We may find other partners in the ecosystem of things that you're working with where we want to directly connect into that data or push data in. That might be as simple as, again, professional services firms, you might want to push certain elements of data into your working papers. That can now be done with an API instance. You may have guidance tools that you're using where you want to pull you know, the top high risk and medium risk transactions from MindBridge and put them into the checklist of things that you want to send to your, to your clients. That's all easy to do. Same thing on the internal audit side, right? Where you might have a working paper system. So I think that the reality is, is APIs are here to stay. And I think through the API, we can, tr we can create a whole lot more value for you in, in the organization. Now, before I go into the short little demo, um, you know, maybe Nick, what I'd ask you to do is just throw up that other question. I'd love to see um, what people are thinking about or what types of tools you have in, in your organizational data set. So I'll give you, you know, 35, 40 seconds to do that and answer. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next little stage where I'm actually going to show you a couple of things. Now, again, you know, just given the time, I am going a little bit fast. Um, if you have questions, if you want to, to, to ask me anything, you know, put that right into the Q&A, uh, right in inside the window there, and myself and the team will, will absolutely get on top of that, um, and we will have lots of time for question and answer afterwards. So, yep, I'll uh, sort of see what happens. I can see the results coming in. Not all that surprising that BI is still, you know, a really strong point. I'll give everyone maybe just another uh, half minute or so before we close it, but we're probably close to to uh, to to um, to time, and I see some folks are actually going into other you know low code, uh, no code sort of tools um, for data transformation and for for different investigations products like Altrix. So that's really interesting. We've got a split between visual analytics tools and um, and these other uh, types of of uh, you know sort of data mining tools, if you will, or data wrangling tools as part of your sophistication. So that, that's really quite great to see that people are, are moving in this direction. All right, so we can close that one off. Again, as I said, if you've got questions, if you've got something you want to chat with me about, um, I've got lots of time to, to kind of go through that. So again, we've released this, the API in an effort to really start supporting you to do more effort, um, you know, either in an automated fashion or to branch out and take that data to where it needs to be. So when MindBridge thinks about your data and thinks about the way that you can use it, it's all about getting it to where you can go. Now, I'm going to flip over to a small little demonstration. And in that demonstration, I'm just going to talk through a couple of things that, uh, that exist. So let me just get this up on screen. And sorry about that. That just shows you my... My big screen there, one second. And that should be pulling up right now into a way that you can see it. All right, so we're back and live into the product. As you can see, I'm sort of stopping at the, the MindBridge offering at the first space or in the first instance of this demonstration. So right away, you can see that all of these dashboards sort of exist. And again, part of our idea or model is to actually allow you to take this data wherever you needed it to go. So you can build your risk segmentation report, you can hit the export button and off it goes. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. So maybe in my risk segmentation, right, I want to be able to look at not just the the areas or the, the, the processes, but I actually want to see, you know, which individual account lines are being uh, being connected into that potential risk by the different areas. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. So it's now obviously got some new dropdowns, right? I can go and look at all of these different, you know, business process areas. I can go in and, and sort of look at anything that that might have, you know, an area of, of concern or just something that pops out at me. And again, really quickly, I have the ability to just export and take this away. Um, when I take these away, it takes all of the data, all of the control point breakdowns, all of the, the, the charts. So you get everything you want really easy packaged, right? Again, if you're going to be supplementing other types of dashboards and other types of routines, though, you probably just want to look at all of that data, right? All of the underlying data and maybe make it look exactly the way you want to look at it. So an example of that would be right now, right? If I just said, oh, let's go and, and select all this data and let's export this out, right? I have the ability to take all of that data. Now, this is a manual 
process today, but tomorrow in tomorrow's land, you might use this as as a as a natural gateway to get data back out as we continue to update the API and, and give you more and more flexibility. Getting this data, having it come out and putting it into your dashboards could be really easy. I think most people have seen some of our, our data uh, in the way that we export it. I'll just pop it out to Excel very quickly and show it to you. Just in case it's been a while, you can obviously pick a whole bunch of the data, what level of, of information you want. And as I, again, as I do that, it's going to take all of that data and it's going to pop it out. In this case, I'm just taking the first hundred rows to Excel. And as I pop this up on the, on the screen um, in a second, as soon as Microsoft decides it likes me, which takes about uh, 20 seconds, it'll show you all the data. Now, again, kind of okay, right? I can just do that anytime I want. My professionals can do it anytime I want. But the goal will be starting to use the API to actually pipe the data or pipe information into the different things that I work on. So here's our data uh, coming out and Excel showing up on our big screen here, right? And you see all of that data, right? Easy peasy, you see all the transactional data. It's all nicely grouped. It's got all that wonderful rich score. Okay, interesting. But as I said, we wanna make this easier. We wanna make it more effective for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you a couple of things in, in very small vignettes. Again, if you have some questions, throw them into uh, the, the Q and A's uh, and I will get to them in about three or four minutes. So the first thing is that the API. Now, I'm not expecting every business user to be highly technical. And so this may look a little bit funky uh, for some of you, but this is just a way to show you kind of what the API has in it, what types of language it expects, and then how would you use this? There's quite a few different types of API, API infrastructure tools that, that your business may be using already in terms of packaging and, and posting it through. But essentially, we've got this, this public API collection and you can use it kind of wherever you need to. Now, I find it really simple and easy to use things like Microsoft's Flow, which is all part of the Power Automate's uh, system. And what this allows me to do is actually really be creative in what the different types of things that I want to, to run out of MindBridge or into MindBridge. So in this particular case, I'm just going to show you a really simple example of something that I've created out. So I've gone and I've pulled in that API. Again, I'm not going to show you all the gobbledygook, but essentially, right, I'm going and I'm getting data from MindBridge. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I know what to get or what does that key look like? Let's just go back to MindBridge for one quick second, something I forgot to show you a little bit earlier. You go into the admin screen, again, assuming you have those types of rights and controls, you go to API and you go ahead and create a new token, right? In that new token creation, you give it a name, what types of things do you want the, the user to be allowed to do? Is there an expiration, right? Maybe this is something that you don't want to be used all the time, right? You have that ability. So I've got a couple of these, one of which Nick uh, has active here for me, one of which Robin uh, set to expire before I got to use it. So I'll use Nick's in, in our example. If you're ever looking for more information, as most of you know, right, our knowledge base and all sorts of other information is available usually within a click. So here's just right from that same screen, you can go and look at all that API and how to, how to get at it. So normally what I'd see is I'd, I'd go in and take that information. For me, I'd push this into flow, right? So I'm going to go and get data from, uh, from that MindBridge token. That MindBridge token is then going to parse out a bunch of the data, right? You can see all this wonderful gobbledygook, right? Okay, really crazy. I'm going to make it really simple, right? How would I review this data? So at the end, let me just shrink these guys up so that you can see it nice and big on my screen. I'll even make this a little bit bigger for everyone. So I have the ability to go in and create some uh, some things. So you can see here, it's actually taking all my data and I'm gonna actually just post this directly into Teams. So any of you that are Teams uh, users out there, this might be you know the type of thing you wanna do. Hey, MindRidge user, this analysis is complete. It's completed at this date by this user, right? Maybe that's all you wanna do with the API initially, just let people know when it's ready. So essentially you go and build that flow, you can create emails, there's all sorts of really neat things in flow and, and other tools that, that allow this level of automation, right? And essentially all you do is you run that through, it's just gonna make sure that I'm actually a Teams user, it's gonna go ahead and, and flow that data through. Now, what will happen is, oops, the system will, forgot to bring Teams up for you, the system will go and it will run and it will provide me with a nice little message that says, hey, you know, you're, your data is complete. It was completed by Joe, um, and it was the general ledger, general ledger analytics. So really, really simple ways to flow that data through. 
Now, part of that could be, hey, I'm going to dump the data. Now, I did this yesterday just to make it easy for all of us to see uh, and make sure I wasn't wasting any time showing you all the different things we can do. But, you know, being able to dump this data out. So there's the data we were looking at. I'm now into Power BI. So what you see right away is all this data can come in. You can now use your Power BI instance. And for those of you that maybe not, aren't technical, I would include myself in this. I haven't used a BI tool officially in terms of creation in a few years. What's wonderful about a lot of them is they say, hey, I can actually just create a report and I can actually have it auto create. So just without even thinking, the data from MindBridge is now being pushed into a Power BI dashboard. And what I get out at the end is actually something really interesting. And now I can you know, obviously change and move some of these data elements, right? But it's showing me very, very quick things that maybe I'm interested in, like how many transactions, um, uh, in this case, what is the value going through my different transactional flows? Who's, who's actually posting the most balances? This is all data, right? That you've you've seen in MindBridge and with a little bit of tweaking, right? We probably don't want some, we probably want counts, those types of things. But you can imagine, right? The possibilities now become endless where you can go right from a MindBridge screen into ways of either posting data in, taking data out, taking statuses out, and getting to your visual analytics tool with all that enriched data. And with a little bit of extra work, right? A little bit of TLC, you'll be able to get right back into um, the information and put it wherever you need it to for those other users. As I mentioned, you know, if you're not an auditor you're, and you're sitting in the controllers or CFO's office or you're in the client, you know, client facing side of your customer relation and you want to show them some dashboards about the risks and all these other things alongside of other data you've got for them, it's all now available to you that you can easily automate back out to your system. So again, this one was a pretty short um, uh, session, you know, set for 30 minutes. Um, I've now got to about the the 26 minute mark. I do have one last slide before we get into the wrap up. I will just go ahead and put myself into slideshow view. And again, if you have questions, if you want to uh, ask myself or, or anyone in the team anything, please feel free. Um, let's just get rid of the things that you don't need to see. Um, so some takeaways, right? The key is visual analytics tools aren't going away. If you're a technology resource and you're supporting all sorts of other analytics, this is a great way to take our risk uh, data, all those scores, and make it more available to more users in ways where they're working. Um, you know, if you're a, a controller or if you're an auditor and you want to implement some continuous monitoring programs and add to the things that people are able to see, a great way is to take this data, push it out to, to where they're already working. Right, make it super simple. You saw what I did there with with just posting a note to Teams. Maybe it's actually just sending an email. Here's the top, you know, soon as soon as a, a, a an analysis gets created or finished, right, goes ahead and takes the uh, the data to um, uh, you know Teams or to to their email, right? Just here's the fifth, top five things, the top ten things, right? So I think the the real takeaways are the API is is a great gateway now for you to start sharing the wealth of data and information and insights that you're getting from MindBridge uh, with others in, in the group. So I'll kind of pause the formal presentation there with a couple of minutes left. We'll go into the Q&A. It'll just take me a second to reorient my screens. Uh, PowerPoint does this every once in a while and well, just is what it is. And as soon as that's done, I will be able to see what types of Q&A we've got. So, oops. Guess we are back in product for a second. So back over to uh, to to the question and answers. If you've got any, throw them in the chat. Uh, any prompting from my session hosts would be great. All right. So uh, always a great question. Like, where do I find more information? Right, right inside your tenant, you've got the ability to go and see what the API looks like. Um, obviously, our our customer experience manager who works with you on a regular basis has a lot of interesting ideas. So you can obviously reach out to them uh, very, very quickly and see what they've got. And um, yeah, uh, David, Nick, any anything else that you see that uh, needs needs answering today? No, that's wonderful, JC. I think the last question um, that appears here is uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, ability to tap into um, looks like Excel or Power BI. 
So that's a really good one. And you gave me an opportunity to take a quick little sip so that my voice stayed with us. So um, plugging into to Excel and plugging into things like Power BI, Power BI is the, the more simplified one because with the API and with Flow, which is part of the Power Automate and Power BI ecosystem, it's really, really simple for you to be able to grab different elements of data, uh, query them and push them through into a data structure inside Power BI, sort of where you saw that automatic report creation. Imagine if you will, um, you know, I'm going to I'm going to query Mindbridge's API. It's going to tell me this the status was completed, and from there I'm going to update uh, a report package inside or a data package inside of Power BI. So it's a pretty simple uh, you know way to think about it. Is it's you know use Flow get data in there um, really really quickly. In terms of Excel, Excel is always a you know an interesting one. What we're trying to do there is make it really simple for you for the ones that you're seeing in tool. Right, just hit the export button. All of that data comes down. The picture comes down. But if you really want to start to migrate into more things, right, I'd suggest you start thinking about well, how can I plug this into my visual analytics tool? So, you know, taking data back out, um, you've got those few different options, and I think that all of them are just going to be dependent. So I think it's relatively easy, but you know, I'm not overly technical. I'm technical enough to make it look amazing. Sometimes uh, today was probably a so-so. But um, for, for some of you, this will be just really old hat and it'll be easy to get data in and out. All right, well, I, I will thank everyone for their time today. I know we've got Ask Me Anything question, uh, sessions coming up right after this. Um, and I know this will be on replay. So if it's on replay and you'd like to um, you know, chat with me or the team, obviously just send us a quick note. Uh, we're always around to help you. Thank you so much for spending 30 minutes with me. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for all of you to just get acquainted with what we're doing next. And I think what you're gonna do next within terms of empowering your users with more data. Thanks again and have a great afternoon.